Hello, my name is Evan Rogerson, also known as Nine Muttergang, and today I am going to be breaking down the VEXU section of the game manual. So, VEXU is just the college level version of VEX, um, with a couple differences. The main differences are in VEXU definitions for ele additional electronics, fabricated parts, and raw stock, um, which I'll kind of get into later because they each have specific rules for them, as you can see noted there. So the first thing obviously different about VEXU is it's a diff different field setup. It is almost completely symmetrical, except for the corners which you can kind of see here. Corners are not symmetrical, those are mirrored, but everything else is the same because the field is right down the middle symmetrical, so that's nice. And then all VEXU fields must have the GPS strip on them, including metal fields or match fields, which is kind of weird because autonomous isn't really that much more complex this year. So, different expansion rules for VEXU. 24 inch robots just can't expand outside their 24 inch starting size. Which I guess I should mention for people who haven't already familiarized themselves with VEXU. VEXU builds two robots, one of which is a 24-inch robot and one of which is a 15-inch robot. And then your 15-inch robot, it works the same way as horizontal expansion does for an 18-inch robot for VRC, except instead of getting to expand out six inches in one direction, you get to expand out nine. And then same thing with vertical expansion, about, I think it's like 32 inches up until you start getting to like climbing and then it's just not touching multiple levels at once. So VEXU does have some different climbing rules, essentially buddy climb. You get points for climbing even if you aren't touching the ladder, as long as you're touching a robot that is touching the ladder. And if you're in an elevated zone, you get double the points for your hang. So VRC max hang with two robots max height would be 24 points. VEXU would be 36, which is definitely a lot more considering the scope of this game. And VEXU robots who are like buddy climbing are considered extra safe by the like safe hierarchy in the VRC game manual. Also, VEXU has different autonomous roles. VEXU has a 30 second autonomous. It used to be 45, but it got shortened this year down to 30. And then VEXU teams also get points for climbing during the autonomous period and for using the corner modifications. So yeah, as I said earlier, Vexu robots build two robots, 24 and 15 inches. Vexu robots can also use a bunch of extra pneumatics, a bunch of extra, extra electronics. Um, there's multiple materials that you can use, which I'll kind of get more into later. So teams, first of all, for Vexu building a robot, you can use any part except for these ones. And these are essentially just like first motors that are like 300 watts, which is Vex normal, Vex normal motors are like 11 watts. So that would be about 27 times more powerful. So you obviously can't use those, but other than that, everything is fair game. So like, if I want to build an IQ robot and then just slap some V5 electronics on it, that's fine. Um, yeah, you can even use hex bug stuff. So yeah, you can pretty much use anything you want on the VEX website. Then fabricated parts and raw stock go hand in hand. So teams can buy like raw stock online, um, which is essentially just anything that doesn't already have a preconformed shape. So like rectangular prisms, cylinders, um, some basic shapes such as L channels and C channels. Those are just kind of the basic things that you can do. You can also 3D print. That falls under raw stock, you can see right there. And you can also do like molding and stuff. So those are all of your raw stocks and then you can make those into fabricated parts by doing processes like 3D printing, cutting, drilling, machining, um, bending. You can chemically bond things together. You can weld. Um, you can do all sorts of really cool things in VEXU with modifying your materials. Definitely a lot less restrictive than the VRC rules because you can pretty much do anything you want as long as it stems from a legal material. Then there are a couple things that are not raw stock, like gear stock, because I know teams used to use that, um, pre-made like wheels, that sort of things. So it's essentially just you have to make the parts yourself. That's kind of the um, purpose of this rule. So yeah, and you can't have safety hazards because VEXU doesn't want you making your robots out of liquid mercury, um, that sort of thing. You can't have, yeah, liquid mercury. So no liquids on your robots, no things that can be considered hazardous, flammable, things that can like shatter, like you couldn't make your robot out of stained glass if you wanted to. So yeah, that's pretty much the basics of that rule. Then you have to bake the parts yourself, obviously. You are allowed to use springs, which I used on my 24-inch robot last year. Uh, springs are cool. You can use any hardwares you want, so just like anything that's a screw is fine. You can also like glue and tape stuff together. And then you can also, you still have to use some of the base electronics. Like you have to use VEX radios, VEX brain, 
Um, I think you have to use like some Vex batteries to power the brain, that sort of thing. But it's really, you just have to use the core electronics. Then unlimited motors. So you can have up to 20 different motors on your robot just because after 20, you'll run out of brain ports. And then you can use whatever sensors you want. So if you find like a camera online, if you can code it to work with the V5 brain, then you can do whatever you want. They just have to interface with the brain and they can have a separate power source too, if you want them to. And they can even have things like a small fan to keep the sensor cool, that's allowed. And then my favorite part of the VEXU rules is unlimited amount of available pneumatic components. Any pneumatic component you find, as long as it's rated for 100 PSI, is fair game. Like, whatever size cylinders you want, whatever size tanks you want, um, they just have to be rated for 100 PSI. You can't have, like, onboard compressors. The only compressor that would be legal is the 30 PSI VEX IQ compressor, which I have not seen anyone do. That would be very silly to see. And then you can't modify the pneumatics part. It's essentially just a safety thing. Um, you can use your own solenoids, too. They just have to follow some specific rules. And then you can use whatever bearings you want. Not a huge thing. And then, yeah, tournament. Since you build two robots, you just play with yourself in 1v1 for qualifications. You also get two robots for skills. Um, and then elimination matches, it's just top 16 teams or whatever. If it's a smaller tournament, you just get thrown into eliminations. If autonomous is 30 seconds. Then driver control period is only 90 seconds, so it's still the greatest two minutes in robotics. And then you're allowed six people in the drive team box. Uh, VEXU students must be enrolled in college. They can't be like dual enrolled with a high school. Um, and you're not allowed to just like swap teams. Pretty similar to other stuff though. So skills is also different. It has a different field setup. VEXU teams do not have to de-score in skills, which I find interesting considering usually VEXU skills is easier to match than VRC skills. So yeah, different setup. Um, same rules pretty much though. Have to start in legal positions, play for the Red Alliance. They don't get any preloads. And then yeah, that's pretty much it for VEXU. Um, it's pretty typical. I think I like the VEXU game much better than the VRC game this year just because the field setup's nicer. Goal Rush is so back right now. Um, let me just pull that up. Yep, you got the three goals right down the middle. Goal Rush is so back. It's going to be fun. And yeah, I just I like that the field is closer to symmetrical. I think VEXU will be a lot of fun this year. See you guys.